Okay, <clears throat> just a little test to prove things out as one of the water solenoids this guy here, let's see if I can pick it up arrived today, or yesterday actually as you can see it's just got a threaded in and a threaded out uh, you can see the direction of the water flow should be and a big old solenoid on top that is I don't know if you can make it out, but it's 12 volt DC. Now, I've also wired up one of these power boards that I've been using quite a lot of. Let me see if I can actually get the camera to point at it. It's got V in here, and this can be anything from 12 to 24 volts DC. So it could be, for example, a motorbike battery, something, or, you know, mains. Now I've tapped into it so that I've got 5 volts on the red wire which goes down to the V in on the nano. Of course ground, the black wire going to ground here. The nano will then provide the 3.3 volts required for itself, 3.3 volts required for the real-time clock and the 5 volts required for the relay card. The other power I'm taking off this unit is the blue wire, this one. And it's 12 volts, which is the voltage required for the solenoid. And after a little bit of uh, trying to remember my basic Ohm's law, it's this guy here, 12 volt DC, and the winding is, um, what was it now, 24 ohms. So that tells me it's going to draw about 500 milliamps, or half an amp. The power board over here is well rated for that, no problems. So what we have now is a 12 volts coming in from the power board into the normally open side of the relay. The white wire going to the water solenoid, the yellow wire coming back and going into the ground of the breadboard. Now to save a lot of messing around with software I didn't bother. So this is the pin that goes to the relay, the um, signal line. So if I ground this pin There's the relay. And here's the solenoid, and you can actually see it. Probably hear it more than see it, but it actually does move a little. 